For Euro 2024, France is shaping up to be one of the most formidable teams under Didier Deschamps. Their tactical setup resolves around a 4-2-3-1 formation, emphasising the unique blend of young and experienced players. Some of the key roles and player roles in the team is going to start off with Kylian Mbappe. Central to France's attack and strategy, Mbappe's pace and scoring makes him a key figure in the team. He's expected to play on the left wing, but we have seen him in the one game they have played, obviously start up front, where he did occur a bit of an injury to his nose. So it is going to be interesting whether he carries on. They have got Giroud, for example, who could step in if needed, but of course, he's not quite killing Mbappe. Now, of course, another player is going to be Antoine Griezmann. Operating in the number 10 role, Griezmann is crucial for creating chances and linking play between the midfield and his attack. His vision and ability to find his space makes him literally irreplaceable. He gets in so many different areas of the pitch, he's a nightmare to play against. Golo Kante, do not forget about him because returning from injury, Kante provides stability and defensive cover in that midfield. His work rate and tackling ability allow more creative players to operate freely. We saw it at Leicester. We saw it at Chelsea. We've seen it everywhere. He is really a man mountain. And of course, Camavinga, a versatile midfielder. Camavinga can both play defensively and box to box. He's done it for Madrid, can play in loads of different areas of the pitch, providing tactical flexibility for Deschamps, which honestly is like a manager's dream. Formation and tactics. Now we know Deschamps does favour a 4-2-3-1, as do most of the coaches nowadays, it seems. It's just a really nice, well-balanced formation between defence and attack. Now, when it comes to the defence, speaking of that, we're only going to have Jules Kunde and Pavard sort of fighting for that right-back position. Well, left-back, Tio Hernandez is expected to start. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. He's a very good left-back. Not too much competition there anymore with other key figures being sort of shadowed out of the team. But the right-back position is obviously all up for the fight. Now, the centre-back pairing of William Saliba and Deot Opakamo offers strength and composure. Obviously, two incredible players. We've seen how good Saliba is for Arsenal. The same with Opakamo at Bayern. Potentially could be a little bit better, but with Saliba, especially this season, he has enjoyed a great time. The midfield with Kante and Adrian Rabo likely to start, which obviously they did, and they just provide a really good defence and an attack and platform because you've got Kante who is going to sit back and then you've got Kamavinga or you've got Rabio who plays in that role, is obviously up to the champs on the day, and this player can attack, he can defend as well, a very good box-to-box -box role, and Kante, he does get forward sometimes, but he definitely does a lot more of the nitty, sort of gritty stuff when it comes to defending out the game. Now, of course, when it comes to the attack, it can be very, very versatile, because you can have Mbappe on the left, Usman Dembele on the right, you've got Turam, you've got Giroud up front, and to be honest, the likes of Dembele, and you also got Turam, they can pretty much cover for each other when they wish to. So, as you can see on the screen right now, Mbappe could play up here. If we have the likes of Turam into the team, Turam could play up front, or you could have Mbappe up front, Turam on the left, or you could even have Mbappe on the left, and you could bring in the likes of Olivier Giroud. So, it's literally endless possibilities, a really strong team. And obviously, group stage matches, they've played one against Austria. They won that 1-0. They've got the Netherlands coming up tomorrow at the time of making this video. And of course, Poland. Now, to be fair, it's looking pretty good. Deschamps' strategy, obviously focusing on a team where they can leverage their way quite far into the tournament. They've got lots of depths, lots of versatility in the team, and they're aiming for a deep run in the tournament. Now, I don't think they're going to win it personally, but I do think they're going to at least make it to a semi-final. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let's get right in to the tactics tester. So we did an absolute fantastic job when it comes to the group stages with really good results like this. The first game is going to be against Ireland. Quite an easy fixture. A 4-1 win in the first game. Obviously you can see, but it was a penalty. A little bit scrappy. But as you can see from the stats there, 20 shots on target, 63% of the ball. There was not a single hope in the world Ireland were ever even going to get a point from that fixture. We then go in against the Czech Republic and we turn them over 7-1. Absolute dominance. Again, a ridiculous amount of shots on target. 12 on target, 26 over overall 57% of the ball. Again, we did concede a goal, but when you are scoring seven, you don't really worry about these things. And a very close game in this regard, to be fair, against one of the best teams in the tournament, that is going to be Spain. But we do come out and we win it in the 14th minute with a man we didn't even really discuss. That is going to be Colo Mani. Again, in real life, I'm not sure how much he's going to get involved in the actual game, but in this game, he's absolutely broken. So that is why he's going to get some game time. And that put us into the second round against Switzerland, but we got off to a very good start inside of five minutes here with Mbappe driving it into the bottom left-hand corner. A really good display there. And it is going to be Mbappe out on the left-hand side in this game into Kamavinga, into Griezmann, into Dembele, who lashes it into the bottom left-hand corner to make it two in 20 minutes. And we wrap it up in the first half in 3-0 fashion in a game which, to be honest, we absolutely dominated. Not as many shots on target compared to the previous games, but more possession, better XG, more shots on target, more shots overall. You could argue maybe they deserved a goal, but you've got to take your chances. And into the quarterfinals, where, to be fair to Portugal, 
ball. They come out the better team. Inside of 20 minutes, Rafael Leal runs at the entire back line. Mayan's got to be doing a lot better there because that is not good goalkeeping. We do bounce back after half time. We did switch to the attack and variant to clarify that as well with Kante through to Dembele into the top left hand corner. A great finish from a great player to get us back into the game. Then a bit more of a direct approach there. A failed clearance from the Portuguese back line with Mbappe getting it back into the box into Colo Mani, who appeared to get quite a fair bit of game time in this system as he plays it over the top into Dembele. A little bit of a lucky touch there. He's going to drive inside and go alone. I'm pretty sure Colo Mani tried to steal it, but he didn't get the goal. And one more goal to come now to wrap it up in 4 1 fashion. Ended up being a very comfortable sort of quarterfinal for us. A great finish from the star man, Kylian Mbappe. And as you can see from the stats right now, it was a very open game and. Portugal did have eight shots on target, so I will say they definitely deserve maybe two, if not three goals, but we would have won regardless. We were really the better team on the day overall. Both teams turned up. We were just that little bit better. And now, of course, to the semi-finals. It is going to be against Austria. Quite an easy team to face with Kamavinga playing a big part in the first goal through to Colo Mani, who is going to make it 1-0 inside of 10 minutes with Griezmann now linking up the play, as we talked about, into Dembele with one incredible touch. He's going to drive at the back line, play it back inside into Colo Mani, who is going to make it 2-0 in 30 one minutes with now play be featured in the second half don't know what i was saying there with Kante picking up the ball driving back in the middle into Griezmann which is nice because he provides all the time he deserves a goal so fair play to him Hernandez into Theo into Camavinga through to Mbappe in the left hand side into Colo Mani the play is to be made to look so simple but it is how good this tactic is and as you can see a 5-0 lead we do concede a consolation goal and do you know what that is some of the best direct football you're going to see it's a good finish but it means nothing and you can see by the stats we did not have to worry at all i mean again 12 shots we we literally dominated every aspect of the game it's a very easy semi-final how did who and how did we perform in the final funnily enough we played the team they're going to be playing next that is going to be netherlands and we come out to a very good start there. i believe it would have been a penalty but the play goes on and mbappe does score the goal there inside of 10 minutes unfortunately for us netherlands decided to turn up today with gertrude down the left hand side cutting it back inside actually a direct ball and it is going to be a sleeve her own goal nothing too much could happen there very similar to the italian own goal from last night a foul there from that is a disgusting challenge but we'll, we'll play on we're doing quite good at that to be fair with camavinga into colo mane but again great challenge from camavinga Kante over the top into mbappe who did have a bit of a knock but still manages to play a world-class ball into the box and at this point we really did have this game all under control great play there from griezmann into mbappe running at everyone back inside and these two are a lethal combo now this would work obviously two around more Giroud as well but the game obviously did factor in to have Colo Mane up front and it is going to be Saliba somewhat redeeming by almost playing a right wing role on this attack for some reason they do get a goal here and it would have been a penalty anyway a very clumsy from Kante there but as you can see it means nothing we won 5-2 a very comfortable lead we dominated the game overall more possession more xg more shots on target and we are going to be your champion so a very comfortable time under this management and the previous page as well you can see here, we won every single game apart from a 2-2 draw against the Netherlands there. So a very, very strong performance. What we're going to do now is we're going to talk through three tactic variants. Now, you are going to need all three, so be sure to watch the entire video because I did altercate between each situation, and you playing the game are going to be doing that as well. So let's go over to it. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's get into it. This is going to be your tactic on the screen, and we are going to talk through the player roles. I do want to say if you want to get access to all three of these tactics in one simple, fast download, console tactics, mobile tactics, rebuild files, you want tactics early, you want the rebuild files early, you personally want priority in the tactic requests, and also the rebuild requests you want one-on-one -on -one tactical help and so much more at the moment a 300 pounds paypal giveaway you can come over and sign up to the patreon below where you've got over 4,500 members they absolutely love it we've got a massive group chat where we talk tactics you get a lot of priority over there so go over and check it out in the description below but we are going to start for the goalkeeper who is simply going to be on support, nothing too special. Now, the wingbacks on the right and the left are going to be the same, and I will say this right now. I do notice in the France system, they do get out quite a fair bit, put some challenges in to win the ball back, and then break. So we are going to have that on, and again, for anyone wondering, Josh, how do I get closed down more? Because I see it a lot. Make sure in out of possession, you have not got the trigger press all the way maxed up, all the way down. Leave it in the middle, leave all of your team instructions pretty blank, and do the player roles first, and then you go into the edit, and you simply apply this. More often, 
and it will come on. Now, both of the ball playing defenders, or one of the ball playing defenders, sorry, and a central defender is going to be simply on the default. Obviously, this is going to be your perfect balance of Upacano and Saliba at the back. A world class centre back partnership right there. Kante, always on the right hand side, is going to be set as a DM in the system on shoot less often. Now, I will say, as we did discuss in the intro of the video, they play with one sort of deeper player in the midfield who does do a lot of the dirty work, if you so will. And Kante is very good at that, so that is why I've put him there. And next to him, we have got a bit of a pushed up 4 2 3 1 in this regard, a box to box on support, simply on get further forwards. Because you see it all the time in the France system, one of the midfield players do push up and the other one sort of sits a little bit deeper. And sometimes it does sort of swap between Kante and the other player. But majority of the time, Kante is always the one who is going to be recovering, winning the ball back if they get countered, for example. So Kante right here is his, pretty much his home. He plays so well there. Now on the left, we are going to have Mbappe in this occasion, and that is going to be told to cut inside and shoot more often as a winger on attack. Again, if he does play on the left, I want him to be doing that. Now, if you are going to be one of these people that does decide to play him up front, so let's just do that right now. So Mbappe up front, and let's just say we are going to have Turam on the left, I would then take off shoot more often. So it all comes down to how you are going to lay out this tactic, whether you're playing as France or whatever team you're playing as, that comes down to you in that regard. Now, on the right, we are simply going to have another winger on attack on cut inside and roam from position. And that is going to be Dembele in there. Now in the middle, you can't really change too much because it is Griezmann, the number 10, on attack as an attacker midfield player. Take more risks, dribble more, roam and move into the channels. Those instructions are absolutely vital. Do not take one off because that is exactly what I want him to be doing. And lastly, we have gone with a complete forward on attack. Now again, this can change depending on how you're laying out your team. If you want to have a bit more of a goal scorer and striker like an Mbappe instead of someone like like a Turam or a Giroud who's there to basically provide for Turam and or Mbappe and Dembele when they're on the wings, you can obviously change to an advanced forward and get that sort of situation done. But if you are going to keep it realistic, then I would keep it what you see on the screen. But I do like to give you guys options. But let's go through to the team instructions. So we have gone with a clean slate on the positive mentality and we are going to leave this bang on in the middle. We're going to pass into the space while overlapping left and overlapping right and of course playing out from the back as well. When it comes to the final third, you can pretty much choose what you wish but in my opinion, if you are using a Giroud or a Turam up front, make sure you've got mixed crosses because you may as well use that aerial ability. If you are guaranteed to be using a short player, you could also go with low crosses. When it comes to dribbling, they do this a fair bit, so we are going to run at defence, pretty much counter-attack and style, and it works really, really well. The directness is going to be set to standard, with the tempo being up to slightly higher, so with this tactic, you are getting a tactic that is going to be quite aggressive, not the most aggressive Gagan Press style tactic I've ever put on the channel, but quite an aggressive tactic that is simply going to look for overlap on options on the left and on the right, and running at the defence. Now, in transition, we are going to simply go with counter and take short goal kicks, so I'm not going to waste your time, not really too much to talk about there. And out of possession, we are going to rock with the standard defensive line. Trigger press, we are going to have to set to more often. And when it comes to the line, we are going to have it as a high press line of engagement. Now let's go over to the attack invariant. We are going to keep the same shape because it is the DNA of the team. We have made it a little bit more attacking in certain areas. So the goalkeeper does remain the same. The wing back on the right and also on the left are going to be on take more risks, dribble more, run wide and close down more on the ball. We don't have two ball playing defenders. I oh, Let me just quickly change that because that is incorrect. Two ball playing defenders because I want them both to be a little bit more comfortable on the ball and to be fair Upacano and Saliba are both capable of doing this and DM is going to remain the same but he is going to be told to get further forwards so on this occasion we are simply having one additional instruction which will mean he will push up the field when he has got the ball which obviously is going to be more attacking and maybe prone to you know be encountered a little bit more but if you are attacking you want to take risks you've got to be willing to take the risks to get the goals a box to box does remain on dribble more and get further forwards the winger on the left is going to remain exactly the same on shoot more often and on the right also remains exactly the same. We do bring in a shadow striker just to push him a little bit more higher up than the classic number 10 sort of role and he's going to simply be on roam from position and we are going to definitely go with the advanced sword because if we're talking goals it is clear of a complete forward so I would definitely recommend that. Clean slate again on the attacking mentality. We are going to leave this in the middle again while overlapping left and overlapping right. We're going to keep this the same in the final third with pass into the space, playing out from the back being an absolute necessity standard and we are going to have the tempo 
all the way up to higher on this occasion. And lastly, we are going to go with not only run at defense, but also be more expressive. So we are going to be a very attacking team in this regard, but we're trying to score goals. You've got to push the team up and take more risks. In transition, we are going to have one more instruction. So before it was simply counter and take short goal kicks. You probably guessed it, but we are of course going to hit them with a bit of counter press because we are trying to win the ball back. We want the ball. We want to score goals. And lastly, when it comes to out of possession, we are going to maintain the high press and line of engagement. We are going to maintain them more often, but this standard line goes to a higher defensive line. Now to defend those games out, a big change in the system is bringing both of the players deep into the midfield. And we are going to start off with the goalkeeper who is simply going to remain the same. Wingbacks on the right and the left are both now going to be on defend simply on close down more. We reintroduce a central defender who is going to be on the default next to a default ball playing defender. So the entire back line is very risk free now. We're going to have the DM, which is going to be Kante on the right, of course, remains the same, as does the default variant. But the ball winner field player does replace the box to box because I don't want him pushing up. I want two players protecting the back line, and we still can somewhat then have this front four contributing when it comes to the attack. So the winger on the left is simply going to be on cut inside and shoot more often. I actually do like having shoot more often in this defensive variant because we are trying to rip shots off at the goal, maybe get a set piece, something like that. So I would recommend having at least one of these front four players on shoot more often. Obviously, use your head a little bit. The best player you've got when it comes to finishing, that would be the position you have shoot more often on. On the right is going to be a winger on cut inside and roam from the position. An attacking midfield player comes in on support on dribble more, roam and move into the channels. So a bit more of a sort of composed Griezmann compared to the default tactic and the shadow striker variant. And lastly, the complete forward is simply going to drop to support. A clean slate on the balance mentality. That is going to be nice and simple. We're going to keep this in the middle with pass into space, playing out from the back. And we are trying to run the clock down right so we are going to play for set pieces and we are also going to make sure we've got time waste now if you haven't got them go over to the patreon right now and get the set pieces because they are the best you're going to find they absolutely cook loads of people have got them and loads of people love them so be sure to get your hands on those we're going to run at the defense and when it comes to the directness we're going to leave it in the standard sort of zone the tempo is going to go down one now this is going to take a different approach to the team as you're not going to be as sort of aggressive when it comes to winning the ball back we're almost going to be regrouping and talking of that we are literally going to hit the regroup in this tab we're going to counter slow the pace down and simply take short goal kicks again so we are not afraid to have a little bit of that time sort of waste and dna in this team now out of possession we are going to go with the standard line the high press line of engagement and we are simply going to leave this in standard it's a very sort of vanilla basic out of position tab but it works really really well and that's going to complete for you the defensive variant the attacking variant and of course the go into your game variant, the balance variant, which you should use. And I've seen some comments now, Josh, why do we need all three? You need all three for multiple reasons. The first one is because it depends on what team you're playing as. If you're playing as a powerhouse, you could potentially get away with playing with all of your games with this attacking variant. If you're playing as a weak team, you may need to start your games in this variant. But as a general rule, go into your games with this one. If you go a goal behind or you're nil-nil, you want to try and get the win. Obviously, you then go to the attacking variant. Once you've got your goal, you can either decide to go to the defensive variant where you can sort of time waste or go back to the default tactic and have a bit more of a composed sort of approach to your game. But hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment now, right now, two tactics you want to see because for now, we are doing back-to-back -back tactic posts daily because we've got the Euros. I'm quite behind with the request, so I'm trying to keep up. But don't worry, the rebuilds are still going to be posted. Do not you worry. And I will say right now, there is a potential that we stream the rebuilds right now on YouTube. So if you watch this part of the video, let me know in the comments what you think. I'll see you in the next one.